Here we go. So this is a really interesting story that went su -su 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 super viral, son. So Sanjay Gupta went on Joe Rogan's podcast. And I highly recommend everybody listen to the entire thing because I do think you're getting a little bit of a misleading picture in the media and even on social media as to how the conversation went. Because there's plenty of time in the podcast where um, it's actually they're not at each other's throats and they're not arguing and they're cordial and they're having a nice conversation. For example, um, Joe Rogan gives Sanjay Gupta credit because Sanjay Gupta very publicly flipped his position on medical marijuana. And I think on marijuana in general, where previously he was against it, he was basically saying it's bogus, it's just an excuse for people to get high. And then he looked at the evidence and made an honest assessment and said, I was dead wrong. And so Joe gave him credit over that. Um, listen to the entire podcast, it's very interesting. But there's a few moments that blew up. Um, one of those moments is on the issue of ivermectin. Joe had gotten COVID not too long ago. He, quote, threw the kitchen sink at it when he got COVID. He took a number of different medications. Uh, including ivermectin, he took uh, z -Pak. he took monoclonal antibodies, which is actually the same treatment that Trump got when Trump had COVID. And uh, I'm missing like two or three other things he took, but the media went after him for taking ivermectin, and they said that Joe Rogan is taking, quote, horse dewormer. Um, now, Joe was really pissed off about that because, of course, he was taking the human version of ivermectin, which was prescribed to him by a doctor, and so this was massively misleading, and he flat out says, listen, they were lying about me. Uh, so we had on Sanjay Gupta, they went back and forth over this, I'm gonna play the video for you, then I'm gonna show you what happened afterwards, where Don Lemon, on CNN, was coping over how this exchange went. So first, take a look at the original exchange between Joe and Sanjay Gupta over ivermectin. I'm glad you're, you're, you're better. Thank I'm glad you. it only lasted a day. You're probably the only one at CNN that's glad. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. We're not. The rest of them are all lying about me taking horse medication. <laughs> we should talk about that. That bothered you. It should bother you, too. They're well, lying I, at your network about people taking human drugs versus drugs from it, veterinary. It, calling it a horse dewormer is not a flattering thing. I get it's that. It's a lie. It's a lie on a news network, it, it, and it's a lie that's a willing... That's that's a lie that they're conscious of. This is not a mistake. Yeah, they're unfavorably framing it as veterinary medicine. Well, the FDA put this thing out. You saw that. Did you see that thing that the FDA put out? What did the FDA put out? <laughs> it was a tweet, and it was snarky. I admit it. They said, "You are not a horse. You are not a cow. Stop taking this stuff," or something like Why that. Why would you say that when you're talking about a drug that's been given out to billions and billions of people? A drug that was responsible for one of the inventors of it making the Nobel the, Prize, the Nobel Prize in 2015. 15, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, a, a drug well, that has been shown to stop viral replication in vitro. You know that, right? I, I, Why would they lie and say that's horse dewormer? I can afford people medicine, motherfucker. <laughs> this is ridiculous. It's just a lie. I don't think anyone is. Th but don't you think that a lie? like that is dangerous on a news network when you know that they know they're lying you know that they know that i took medicine like here it is this is ivermectin you got this it right you. here somebody gave it to me all right hang on i, I do you, the, the thing is we're, we're, we're like going so fast like i feel like i'm missing i'm missing do you think I want that to, that's a problem that your news network was not, lies well i don't, I don't they, dude what did they say they lied what did and they said say? i was taking horse dewormer first of all it was prescribed to me by a doctor yeah yeah along they with shouldn't have said a it was bunch horse. of if, other if medications was, if you got a human pill because there were people that were taking it the veterinary medication and i you're not obviously you got it from a doctor so that it shouldn't be called that ivermectin can be a very effective medication for parasitic disease and as you say it's probably you know i think what a quarter billion people have taken it around the world more, i get that way more so way more can, billions can, of people have taken it can i just come back to the one i want to talk about two, no, no, two, no, no, two, no, no, two no. things you on have the to, you have before we get to that does it bother you that the news network you work for out and out lied, well, just outright lied about me taking horse dewormer. They, they, they shouldn't have said that. Why did they do that? I don't know. You didn't ask? I didn't think that was I your, did, you're the medical guy over there. I didn't ask. I should have asked before coming But they did it with such glee. No, yes, Joe. Yes, I watched. They, you I watched. watched? I watched. You watched. No, I don't think there's yes, glee. Yes, they did. I don't, I, no one takes... <laughs> Joe Rogan says he has COVID. Taking, taking livestock drug despite warnings. Yeah. <laughs> Jamie had to pull this up. You want to huh? play it? Does she, does she this have is glee? your news network. I'm going to watch. Let's see. I'm going to watch. Rogan telling his 13 million Instagram followers that he was treated with several drugs, and he included ivermectin on the list, a drug used for livestock that the FDA and the CDC warn against using to treat COVID. Turns out I got COVID. Look, like they put so a yellow filter on me too. Kitchen sink at all kinds <laughs> they did. of meds. Monoclonal you see the, the original bodies, video uh, versus that? I look like shit there. Z Do you know that? I think you look good. Pause. Uh, Pause. It's enough. Prednisone. I don't That's think. That's enough, Jimmy. I don't but, think Aaron had glee. Oh, uh, well, it's more Brian Stelter was the gleeful one. But this, the point is, that's a lie. It can be used for humans. I, I get it. I, I totally Not just could be used for humans. Is often used for humans along with all the other drugs I took. 
all human drugs. Yes, they know it's a human drug. It's, it's a, it can, it's right. But and the, they lied. The thing, it's I, defamatory. It, it is. It is a uh, yeah. They shouldn't have done that. It's get, defamatory, right? Well, I don't know if it's defamatory. I bet it is. Yeah, well, I'm not a lawyer. I'm not a lawyer. It's but, a lie. Well, see, here's the thing. It, it, can we? You can have nuanced discussions about this. <laughs> no, right? you can't. Yeah, you can't you can have nuanced discussions about lying about someone taking horseshoe. There armor. was no glee, by the way, from from her. She well, was, I didn't any, watch her. Anyone takes uh, anyone takes people's illness. Oh, oh yes, they. Do. They don't want you, you to get stop sick, it. Joe. Yes, they do. They, they were want upset you to get that sick. I got healthy. I, I, the, the, that's one thing they, they didn't report on the fact that I was negative five days later. And working out six days later. Well, six well, days after infection, I was back in the gym. I am glad. Felt great. I'm glad you, you do. I really Me am. Too. I, I think Thank you. Most of the people I'm glad I, you're glad. You're a nice guy. Most of the people I know, I think, would be glad that you... I don't think that there's uh, any... Grief. There's a lot of people out there that weren't glad. But my point is, you're working for a news organization. If they're lying about a comedian taking horse medication, what are they telling us about Russia? What are they telling <laughs> us about Syria? Do you, know, do you understand that that's why people get concerned? I think that last point there is the most important point that it is true people do not trust our institutions generally but definitely don't trust the media the me the trust in media is at a historic low right now as i'm talking to you guys and that is so thoroughly earned because remember they've been on the wrong side of virtually every war going back decades even the major newspapers new york times wall street journal you name it um They've been wrong, and they've been advocating for invasions and, and bombings, and they do it based on lies or misinformation. They basically are just stenographers to the military-industrial complex and the Pentagon and the intelligence agencies. They're reliably wrong about that stuff. They always lie and mislead on economic stuff, like the fake fact checks of Bernie when it came to Medicare for All, uh, where they're just siding with industry over, you know, statements from Bernie that were banal and provably, verifiably correct if you look at all the evidence around the world when it comes to healthcare systems. Um, and Joe's correct. There is a crisis of trust for the media. And I do think stuff like this is one of the main reasons why, because were there people who were taking horse paste, the horse version of ivermectin and the, the veterinary version of the medicine? Yes, because there were a number of reports on that where there was a massive uptick in calls to poison control centers about um, basically overdosing on horse paste. I think the ivermectin horse paste is a way higher concentration, which is not safe for humans, and people are having all sorts of issues, bowel issues. and uh, So that was... There were people who were taking that, and if you don't believe me on it, there were like... I don't know if they're still up, but there were like, you know, Reddit forums where people are talking openly about, oh, media doesn't want us to know about this, and so I'm going to take, it's the same version if it's the horse one or the human one, I'm going to take this. So there were people who were taking it, and there were negative consequences associated with that. Um, but of course, Joe wasn't, and it's tr the media knew that. Of course, the media knew he was taking the human version and not the vet version, but they thought it was a cutesy way to own him because other people were taking the vet version. So they think like, oh, this is... This is dangerous and this is misleading. And also, they just don't like Joe Rogan. They don't. They don't because he sort of represents everything they don't represent. So, he, I mean, he gets phenomenal numbers for his show. That's obvious. He's the number one podcast in the world. Um, but I read a great article that talked about how he's fundamentally the opposite of them. Like, they have their narrative. They have their um, elite worldview. And they work backwards from their conclusions all the time. Joe is almost so open-minded that he'll talk to anybody and it, it's the opposite of, like, cancel culture in a way. You know, like, if he's willing to talk to both me and Ben Shapiro, which he does, he's sort of, he holds to a value set that's the opposite of them with their narrative and their closed-minded views and their uh, perpetuating of a single narrative. He's like, I'll talk to Ben Shapiro, I'll talk to Steven Crowder, I'll talk to Kyle Kalinske, I'll talk to Jimmy Dore, I'll talk to Abby Martin, and the list goes on and on. So, they don't like him. They don't like him. So, they thought it was a cutesy way to sort of own him, to say he's taking horse dewormer, when he's not, he's taking the human version. When, by the way, guys, it's not like there wasn't a response you could have made that was critical and reasonable of Joe Rogan, and I know because I made that criticism you know, look, the studies on ivermectin, at the at best, they're not conclusive that it helps. 
at best. Now, Joe said, well, in vitro it kills viruses. Yeah, but your body's not, it's not just in vitro. It, it's totally different when you're actually putting it in your body. And all of the, it, originally ivermectin maybe showed some promise that, hey, this could help fight COVID-19. But it was the same thing with hydroxychloroquine. And then when we got more studies, we realized that's actually not true. It doesn't really help with it. And right now, the same thing's happening with ivermectin, where originally there was some promise, and then recent studies have shown there's it's not really great for treating COVID. So if you wanted to make the case, hey, man, you're taking this drug, and at best, it's uh, not conclusive yet. It has not been approved by the FDA. Um... At worst, it just it's just doesn't work. It's not the right drug. If you wanted to make that argument, that would have been totally fine. That would have been reasonable. I would agree with the media over Joe, but they didn't do that. They said it, he was taking horse dewormer. He wasn't taking horse dewormer, and they did that because they don't like him and because they wanted to own him. So it, it is a real shame, too, because, again, it's not like there aren't reasonable criticisms. So another area where I would disagree with Joe is the vaccine. Now... My view on the vaccine, based on the evidence and the data and everything I've seen, is that it works and it's great. And, I, you know, I just had the article up before, but there was a French study of over 22 million people that found vaccines cut severe COVID risk by 90%. So hospitalization, severe illness and death, it's cut by 90% if you take the vaccine. That is approved by the FDA. That is approved by uh, bodies, governmental bodies all around the world. And uh, again, the data is clear. So there are criticisms that you can make, but you have to be reasonable and measured and nuanced and intelligent and correct. You can't just lie or misstate and own and take glee in that fact. And especially because when you're dealing with somebody who's the most popular podcaster in the world, you're going to have to tread carefully in your criticisms because, it, you know, if you bring an anvil to drop on his head, people are going to say, you're not really being fair. And they're right. You're not really being fair. So Joe has, has said that he doesn't think that like young, healthy people really need to take the vaccine. And even on that, I disagree with him because herd immunity is really important. And if you're a young, healthy person right now, it's only approved for, I think, age 12 and up. But if you're 12 and up, you want to take the vaccine because you can still get COVID. And yeah, you're probably going to be fine. The overwhelming majority of the evidence shows you're probably going to be fine if you get COVID and you're 12 or 13. It doesn't affect kids nearly as bad as older folks. But you can still pass it to mom or dad or grandma or grandpa if you're 12 or 13 and you have COVID. So you might be fine, but you could pass it to somebody who maybe won't be fine. So that's really important. And so that's an area where I disagree with Joe, where I say, no, actually, everybody who they approve the vaccine for, they should take the vaccine. Now, are there some rare cases where even fully vaxxed people end up dying? Yeah, but usually there's a perfectly reasonable explanation for that. Like Colin Powell just died, and, but come to find out, he had a specific kind of blood cancer, which made his body unable to fight off infections. So he had blood cancer, he had Parkinson's, and he was 84 years old, so he was vaccinated and he died. That's an example of the smaller percentage of people who are fully vaxxed and they can die of COVID. But again, French study, over 22 million people... Vaccines cut severe COVID risk by 90%. So CNN has fucked up in so many ways here because you you have zero credibility. And now Rogan has all the credibility. And by the way, Rogan will be the first to tell you, like, you shouldn't really take your medical advice from me in the first place. And he's right about that. You shouldn't. But you know what else? You shouldn't take it from CNN either because they're lying to you. So you need to look at the evidence and the data and look at the macro picture, not the micro picture, not the anecdotes, not Nicki Minaj's cousin's friends with a swollen ball sack. Don't get caught up in the anecdotes. You have to look at the data. You have to look at the macro picture and judge accordingly. And, you know, CNN really blew all their credibility. I mean, they blew it a long time ago. But this is a great example of Joe's right. I mean, a lot of the people, maybe a handful of the hosts genuinely didn't know that, you know, there's a difference between the horse dewormer version, the veterinary medic medication, and the human version. But I think most of them knew, and they said it anyway. So I think Joe's right. Now, is it actually defamatory in the sense that Joe can win a lawsuit? I don't think so, because you have to prove intent. And it's hard to prove that, you know, they lied with malice against you. They could just claim ignorance. They could just claim, hey, I didn't know, or I read it from this headline, and I thought it was true, so I repeated it. Whatever. But... 
it definitely is misleading, and I think it is a lie. Whether or not you can prove it in a court of law is a separate question. Um, so CNN uh, was really hurting over this. Now again, watch the whole podcast with Sanjay Gupta. A lot of it, they're not at each other's throats or arguing, and it's a perfectly reasonable conversation. Um, but CNN did not like this exchange on ivermectin because it, it really makes them look like what they are, which is they were lying and misleading about Rogan. Um, now, let me, just real quick, side note, there are some people who were just joking about Rogan taking horse medication, and for them, it's like, okay, you're joking and the intent was a joke, that's fine. But for a news network, no, there is no, y you can't make that claim, because that's not what you were trying to do. But anyway, so Don Lemon talks to Sanjay Gupta, and look at what they say. He did say something about ivermectin that I think wasn't actually correct about CNN and lying, okay? Ivermectin is a drug that is commonly used as a horse dewormer. So it is not a lie to say that the drug is used as a horse dewormer. I, I, I think that's important, and it is not approved for COVID, correct? That's right. That's correct. It, it, it is not approved for COVID, and you're right. I mean, the FDA even put out a, a statement saying, you know, basically reminding people it was a strange sort of message from the FDA, but that said, you're not a horse, you're not a cow, stop taking this stuff, is essentially what they said, referring to ivermectin. Now, I think what, what Joe's point that is... It's been approved for humans, and, but not necessarily for COVID, right? Yeah. That's correct. It's been it's been used for a parasitic disease for something it's called river blindness, and it's been very effective for that. But, you know, just because it works for one thing doesn't mean it works for something else. Right. And, you know, there's still a few ongoing clinical trials around ivermectin. But for the most part, if you look at the data, there's no evidence that it that it really works here. When Joe got sick, he took ivermectin. He also took monoclonal antibodies, mm -hmm. which is, you know, an infusion of these antibodies. So he took both those things. It's, it's, it's very likely it was the monoclonal antibodies that made him feel better so quickly. So Don Lemon there is trying desperately to save face and save credibility for CNN, and that did not work at all. That didn't work at all. He said, well, Rogan took a drug that is commonly used as a horse dewormer. Okay, but... That's not what the claim was. They said he took horse dewormer. Those are totally separate claims. Those are totally separate claims. So he sidestepped it there. He did a little sleight of hand move there. They, guys, when I get something wrong, I try to come out here and say, I was wrong about this or that. That's what I do. They don't do that. And Don Lemon knows it's a completely different dosage. One is a veterinary medication. One is a human medication. You know, uh, pro tip... When one is a paste version, and it's got a picture of a horse on it, that's the vet version. That's obviously not what Joe Rogan took. So, why can't they just admit it? Now, Sanjay Gupta did try to say, well, Rogan's point is there, but then Lemon sort of cut him off a little bit. Um, I do think Sanjay Gupta is an honest actor, and I even think Joe would tell you he's an honest actor. But I think Don Lemon is trying to play defense for his network there. But dude, it is too little too late. What you should have said is, sorry, we're, you know, shouldn't have done that. We were wrong. You weren't taking horse dewormer. There are some people who did take it. There are some people who did take the vet version. That is dangerous. That's not okay. Uh, they shouldn't take it. You can also say that second part of what he said, which is, the evidence is not great that this thing works for COVID. That's totally fine and perfectly reasonable to say, and I, that's true. But they blew their credibility. And if you've been following this stuff for a long time, they blew their credibility a long time ago. Advocating for every single war, being dead wrong on a number of major issues. I mean, again, the media got Russiagate wrong. They pretended Donald Trump was owned by Vladimir Putin and he was a puppet of Putin. That wasn't remotely true. You know, um... Advocating for war in Syria, Brian Williams saying, look at the beauty of our weapons taking off to bomb a Syrian airport. Does that sound like objective reporting to you? Is that what that sounds like? It's amazing that, and by the way, there will be no consequences. That's the part that I feel most personally, because you guys know how it works on YouTube. You guys know that there's a, you know a ranking system, and some people are deranked in the algorithm, some people are on the top of the algorithm, and I think it's a tiered system. I think there are levels to it. And if you're CNN or MSNBC or Fox News, it doesn't matter what you say, it doesn't matter how wrong you are. 
you still get pushed out there, shown to new people, recommended all over the place. And if you're somebody in my position or any other independent new media outlet, they don't trust you. They don't know what you're going to say. So you're sort of pushed to the bottom of the algorithm and you're not showed to as many new people. And it's like the thing that drives me crazy is it doesn't matter how many instances like this we have. It doesn't matter how many illegal wars they advocate for. It doesn't matter how many stupid conspiracies like Russiagate they push out there. It doesn't matter how unethical and dishonest they are. I mean, look at the whole Cuomo thing on CNN where he was with his brother in the meetings, teach, you know, coming up with a defensive strategy against Me Too allegations, and then he would go out on TV and be a reporter at night. He did propaganda for him when there wasn't a scandal and said he's a great governor, but then when a scandal breaks, he doesn't cover, he doesn't talk about it. In fact, he's trying to help his brother behind the scenes. The media has no credibility, and they always violate ethics uh, in, in journalism, but there's no punishment for them ever. Now, by the way, I'm actually not saying you should punish them. I'm saying remove the chains from new media and independent media and allow us to thrive. Now, are there some independent new media outlets that are bad and terrible and also say incorrect things? And I'm looking at you, right-wing media. Of course, of course. But that's the price you pay for freedom of speech and a free press and a fair, open and honest meritocratic algorithm is good things will rise to the top and also some bad things will rise to the top. But right now, it is rigidly controlled and the Ministry of Truth are the networks that are more wrong than anybody else ever. And it happens all the time. I mean, Fox News and One American News Network and Newsmax have been spread anti-vaccine propaganda relentlessly. And there's going to be no, you know, punishment for that. The Jordan Chariot is another great example of this. He shot the footage on January 6th on the ground of the riot. And he posted on his YouTube channel. It got pulled from his YouTube channel, but he licensed that footage to CNN, MSNBC, Fox News, and all the, the nightly news outlets or some of the big networks. And they were able to put it on their channel, and it didn't get pulled down, and it didn't get demonetized, and they weren't deranked. It is more than a two-tier system. There's like probably six or seven or eight tiers or something like that. But they get to lie, they get to mislead, and there's no consequences whatsoever. And I think the reason why this feels good to so many people is that, uh, you know, Rogan is kind of holding the network accountable. And even after he does that, Don Lemon can't help himself but put up a terrible defense of... CNN, his network. Listen, even with the chains on independent new media and podcasts and stuff, they're going to continue to rise and get more numbers just slower than they normally would because this is the competition. <laughs> the competition is like Weasley, slimy little people pushing their shitty narrative, defending people who are in the club and besmirching people who are outside of the club. And uh, I think people see it for what it is, you know? Again, I have some disagreements with Joe on COVID stuff. I think you should definitely get the vaccine. And it saved... I think there was a study that said it already saved. Let me look this up as I speak. I don't want to misspeak as I talk about this stuff. COVID vaccine... Saves 200,000 lives. I think that's the number, but I'm going to fact check myself live on air here. Here you go. COVID-19 vaccines saved nearly 280,000 lives in the U.S. Okay. Uh, COVID-19 vaccines saved hundreds of thousands of lives and prevented more than a million hospitalizations in the U.S., according to new estimates from researchers at Yale University and the Commonwealth Fund. So, I think that's accurate. I think that's true. So, I have some disagreements with Joe on the vaccine. He says, uh, you know, people should get vaccinated unless, you know, you're young and healthy, you don't necessarily need it. I disagree. Herd immunity is a thing. You want to get vaccinated if you're young to protect mom and dad and grandma and grandpa. You want to accidentally spread it to them and then they die. Um, so I have disagreements with him on that. I have disagreements with him on ivermectin in the sense that even the human version, at best, it's not conclusive yet that it works. At worst, it just doesn't work. Um, but he has a lot more credibility in this crazy media environment because, yes, yeah, CNN, MSNBC, and Fox News are like the biggest purveyors of misinformation. And they don't get treated like that. And so Joe sort of unmasked them here. And for that, I think everybody's happy. Hey, y'all, do me a favor and like and subscribe. It helps out big time in the algorithm. Click the bell as well for notifications when videos drop. And watch that video on screen right now. You know you want to.